Good evening, everyone. Like I stated in past couple videos, we are going to be doing at least once a month something different. Something that's non-political. All right, Bree. But yet, yeah, alone, something that stays on the concepts and ideas of, you know, still making you think and question things. There's a lot of urban and folk legend, myth, lore, paranormal stuff that's historically based as well. Try to keep some, as much of the occult, occult side of things in, out of it as much as possible. But like I said, there's also, I don't know when I'm going to do it, but I do want to do the George Washington prophecies. That's something I've studied, researched. I just want to re-familiarize myself with it before I actually do a podcast on it. But it is an interesting thing to discuss, and we plan. I plan on doing it in the next within the next couple of months. You know, there's all kinds of things to talk about from Bigfoot, Nephilim, Native American folklore. Love it, rich in history. The Aztecs and Incas when it comes to the United States. As we've discovered. We've even discovered in the Grand Canyons. Egyptian artifacts. Egyptian hieroglyphs. Weapons. So there's a whole realm of things we can discuss. Including we can get into the MK Ultra, How the CIA and FBI use psychics. And their delve and instrumental work in using a pseudoscience, say to speak, more of a paranormal cult side of things that they've used. And yes, we have our classic, you know, I'm not a big fan, but nothing's off the table. So I, I'm sure there could be some talk of some ETs. In fact, I know there'll be a little talk of ETs. UFOs and stuff like that. Like I said, this is more just to have fun, a break from the politics, a break from everything that's going on that we, we're just tired of. We need an escape. And this is at least once a month, this is going to be our, my escape because I do enjoy doing these. I used to do paranormal research and investigation, I've gotten away from it. It's always drawn that there's always that, you know, push to go back. And I don't know. I have not decided. There's one there's one spot that, that will bring me back if I ever get the permission. Every year I try to get a permission to go do at an investi investigation, a two night investigation at the place. One of these times, they'll let, say yes. I mean, they got to deal with Park Ranger and. I don't know. <laughs> In that area, they're just a little bit funny about it. But I mean, let's talk. You got serpent mounds here in in, o in Ohio, and the place I'm talking about research is in Ohio too. Doing an investigation. It's actually probably about ten minute drive from my house. Uh, okay. Give me one second while I shoot her a link. Uh, I'm going to have to do it through Twitter. Just so you know, Bree, you could have actually just went to the mines, to the group, and jumped in. This actually, it, this connects to both our phones. We we have the, the same group on our phones. And Sons and Daughters of Liberty's group. 
via the gathering that gathering over there so we're actually connected to all of them so anybody's actually got a link to that room can actually access this when i'm actually on the website streaming from there which is like i said i've been using jitsi for a while and i didn't realize that they actually had a place where anybody can go i mean it's amazing i can record as i'm doing the stream it's being recorded i can now add a separate room for when i have callers call in to wait so we can screen them so we don't have what we've had in the past where somebody just comes in and tries to get the stream shut down for saying stupid things so i'm very happy with the setup now and i mean it's so it's simple easy i share screens it's what i'm looking for and want i don't have to deal with the constant headaches of setting up obs whenever i change you know i've got it already set up with my different screens but Yeah, I'm going to have to save this link. I completely forgot about this one. <laughs> I'm loving it. I had issues, just so you know. It, I had to completely reboot my router and my computer both. Not once, but three times. And my phone to even begin and I'm still having issues with your last stream. It'll only play for about, uh, about 90 seconds and then it shuts off. Um, I had issues with my last stream. So I don't, I haven't even went back to look, look at it, but yeah, oh, my, there, there was all, I got on a subject, start talking about one, a certain subject that yep. everything went nuts. It started buffering. But according to the statistics over here, I'm streaming perfectly. I even pulled up, did a speed test while I was doing it. I, you know, I got, I got Spectrum. I got great, I got high speed internet. Yeah. I should not have the issues I was having. That's like I said, you know what? I already had plans to do this podcast. It is what it is. I'll go back maybe tomorrow or later tonight. I just wanted to give you the 411 on that, you know, and, and it's, it's weird that you would bring up this topic because um, I had a phone call uh, this morning um, very early. Somebody w was talking about um, stuff along this, in this, this vein uh, of uh, urban uh, legend. And I was like, hmm interesting and i was like y you just pay attention watch um places that i usually post you never know um what i may um pop off about or um person i usually end up co-hosting with um he's always a good one to talk about stuff like that so pay attention and uh yeah it's a great night, you know, to get away from all this political. Um... Yeah, I actually had to get off Twitter because uh, I, I came across the tweet that just oh, just got my blood boiling and it, it would have been. I had to get yeah. kicked off. I probably got to kicked off Twitter and YouTube because no, it's but that's not here and that's not there. We'll discuss that some other time. We'll discuss, yeah, we're maybe we'll discuss, discuss that in the book in the back room when we're done because yeah. yeah i don't play when they start mess messing with our first responders exactly um you know i mean i mean actually we, there's we will even talk about ai and technology within this stuff because that falls under these encompassing realms yes it does like i said i'm been looking forward to do this i've tried it once before over here it's i don't know it's i have a hard time i try to not bring kotr stuff over here well but this is something that i know i can do because it's you know like i said i mean we've had talks me you and hunter had some great he brought it up he's the one that actually is like man i need to because i've 
I remember during COVID, I was, I usually do, the last one I did on these was a couple years ago over here, and it was for Halloween. But I was going to do one during COVID about masks, the symbology and the legends of masks, what they were used for. Yep. And you can actually um, go back even farther. Um, I mean, it, it's, it's the, the mythology and the, the folklore on masks goes back so far um, that the medicine men and medicine women um, in virtually every culture um, going back um, from as soon as we became hunter-gatherer societies um, used certain herbs and certain plants like you, you go to certain museums, you'll see those elongated beaks uh, on some masks where they would put certain um, fragrances and certain spices into the masks to ward off um, specific illnesses, you know? Um, they were most commonly used for during like the plague, Yep. Um, they were used here in the United States during the, sm the small, smallpox and tuberculosis outbreaks, especially in like the East Coast, like in West Virginia, some of the, t the towns and Ohio, there were some towns in Southern Central Ohio that they've been discovered even here in Indiana. So they, all yeah. All Wisconsin, you know, all throughout um that any of the river corridors where you, is where you will find these mass migrations uh, of the hunter gatherer society you're going to find these masks are there it, 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 it's a matter of have the the um the state antiquities departments said are these a a, a threat to quote unquote um, society to, for public viewing, yes or no. And that has what it, it is really where this all comes down to. And, and, and you know, the irony is, is, is I don't believe that they are, but who am I? You know, I, I, I'm just Jane Q. Public um, that has a, a, a very loud voice that is not afraid and cannot be silenced, quite frankly. I mean, that the, it's been tried, but you know, I mean, um, the horror stories of just the urban legends and folklores of the medical society, the insane asylums. I mean, well, what what it is, you know, you, you brought up a good point uh, or a good uh, topic. Um, the the tuberculosis, um, uh, hospitals, um. You know, Wisconsin had a they had three that were, were primary, um, and they today they're they're uh, all three of them. There's only two left um, standing, but they they use them now as the the state mental hospitals now. I'm gonna rather step away than, for a second. Okay, you know, and, and this is very common in most states that what was once used as the the tuberculosis hospitals um is today it is now used a, as either a state mental um institution or the buildings themselves have been completely tore down and, and removed so that people don't know what ha has actually happened there it, it, unless there there's people like me who absolutely know the history i mean there there's a, a couple of channels out there that actually travel the world um exposing the truth um about some of these uh tuberculosis hospitals um 
throughout the uh, the entire world, um, really. And some of these places, the the stories of, of how they they treated some of these patients it is <coughs> just short of, of um, grotesque and. and um my god um that's what i just were, said hmm? that's what i just said it, it it's it, 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 it it's beyond barbaric oh my god. um i mean they would shove hockey pucks in people's mouths ho- legitimate <clears throat> full-size hockey pucks in people's mouths just to make them be quiet because of what the tuberculosis was doing. And they were doing this in Wisconsin. So, and and in Wisconsin, they were doing this in the winter and and these facilities, they weren't heated very well. Um, They, yeah, they had a, a, a boiler system, but they were far from heated very well at all um and and that you know fortunately with today's technology things have gotten a lot better but you know the interesting thing was maybe one of wisconsin's um i i hate to even mention or even give the 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 individual's name any kind of power nor uh notoriety but ed gein it was believed that he and his brother both um, possibly may have both had um, uh, at one point in life had tuberculosis, which is possibly what drove Ed Gein um, over the edge. Um, do I believe that that is a, a legitimate uh, probability? Because, well, Ed Gein died at Mendota Mental Health Institute in Madison, Wisconsin. Um, because he was not, uh, he was found mentally unstable for for trial. So, will we ever know if he actually had tuberculosis? No, we won't. Um, but there's been a few other people throughout it, um, our generation and, and in our time that is it possible that maybe they didn't get the 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 tb shot as a kid and and could have actually had tb and and drove them uh over the edge thoughts well yeah most definitely i mean i mean let's keep it real we we still get tested people are still being tested today for tb we never eradicated tb my you know perfect case my um one of, one of my very best friends he's a medic well he was a, me- uh, a medic he's retired now 25 years um he actually tested positive uh for tb after taking care of a pa- uh treating a patient who had tb oh, and, yeah. and, and, and you know what they rather than the, the conventional treatment that they normally use uh, just to give you an idea of where we're at with today's medicine, do you know what the, his doctor told him as a, a better alternative to today's um, barbaric? Still to this day, in 23, do you know what they told him to do in order to in order to basically kill TB and, and just to stave it off, to to keep the the disease in check? Do you know what his doctor told him to do? every day for the rest of his life Uh -uh. you know what have a shot uh, uh, of jaeger or something in that vein and and, uh, in that proof every single day for the rest of his life a shot of alcohol the proof of jaeger or in that vein well i mean i know people i mean especially in the appalachians man they still keep a mason jar in their cupboards that's their medicine. They keep a separate I, mason jar aside. That's straight gunfire. <laughs> I mean, it's the highest proof they can get it, 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 from the shine. 
Yeah. And that's their medicine. And trust. And I'll take tell you what I remember because I used to every summer if I catch catch a cold right before spring and I can't get rid of it, I'll have that. I would have that cold all summer long, and it was yep. basically a, something like you know strep and the, the whooping cough. I couldn't yep. stop coughing. Well, one yep. day my grandmother's like, "I got something for you." Yep. She poured. We got 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 in the, got in the cupboard, pulled out a bo- bottle of old Dan Tucker. Yep. Put some honey in a shot glass. Poured poured me a shot. Drink that. And after that, I I never get, had it. It went away within a, two days. Of course, I got sick that day. <laughs> I decided to afterwards to eat some strawberry shortcake. <laughs> I mean, a, a whole big bowl of strawberry shortcake. <laughs> Followed up by some Doritos and yeah, no, nope, that, but that was actually the first time I blew it or not. No, it wasn't. I drank it. I had real liquor in Brazil, so never mind. Yeah, it, 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 it's, you know, and, and I, you know, um, because of, uh, of my, my heritage coming out of the, uh, the, the Blue Ridge Mountains, uh, uh, uh Kentucky, you know, um, it, it's, that 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 same uh medicine you know i i keep it you know i i and i'll be the first to admit you know when i i had uh, um the um uh and not once not twice but three times um apparently because i because once is just never enough i had to get it three times you know um in the la- over the last three years you know um actually closer to four now um but that's how i i i cured it i i didn't just cure the dang uh bug i i killed it um in in five days well the first time it took 21 days because well apparently the bug was just that that virulent but you 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 get the point you know um i keep a a a jar uh, of 185 um that is specific and it's labeled medicine mm-hmm. um and, and that recipe for that specific strain goes back literally to the very founding days of our nation's history it literally goes back to our founding father you, you know i'm glad you brought that up because I, I do want to get into a little bit of you know history aspects of especially like urban legends and folklore of things you know i'm from from ohio granted my family originated if we go clear back to my great my founding father john rutledge he was from south carolina he was president of south carolina and we all know that that aspect but we also know there was a great push by george washington and many of the founding fathers to get land in ohio in the ohio valley it was the hub for really truthfully the hub for almost almost every native tribe has spent time or visited the ohio valley it is so rich with folklore and legends and myths clear down to the native americans where one of their biggest battles with you know this is this is my personal opinion why our governments work so hard at eradicating and getting rid of the Native Americans was because the knowledge that they had, the knowledge of the Aztecs, the knowledge of the giants, the Nephilim, within, and I've sat down and had lengthy discussions and talks with elders from the Native American, several Native American tribes on the very topics of the giants, the Nephilim. And we, we know there's been bones found here in Ohio or in Ohio. You know, we've got, Nobody really knows what's in the serpent mounds. We, we also know the, those exact same mounds. Um, here, it, it well, Wisconsin not so much um, the serpent mounds, but in Northeast Iowa, we actually have five different ident- now five different identified serpent mounds. Now I'm going to send something to you in, in the side chat. In Jitsi, but this is this will be directly relevant to what 
why the push into the Ohio River Valley. And when I when you see the name, you're, it's going to make you scratch your head. But I'm wording it this way for a specific reason. It is the Native American name of what is was grown in the Ohio River Valley at that time. I'm, I'm familiar with that term. And when okay, it comes you, to the Native you want me American, to just say it? Yeah, go ahead. To, maize. It is the Native American term called corn. The quality and, and, and the, the potency of the corn. It is the proteins within the corn was so high in yield that the medicinal properties of the corn was so high at that time that it's what part it's one of the many reasons why they were being driven to come that far west and it is it, it, there's very few parcels of property left it literally in the world but there there's only very few fields left that is producing that same strain of corn that goes back over 250 years now that it's still able to match that same level of, of protein and, and, and caloric density that the corn the, uh, uh, of versus today versus the maize, i.e. corn that was being grown in the Ohio River Valley more than 250 years ago. Now, it's in it, only in a very, very few spaces and places, and, and it's those property owners know very well what it what they have. I, I, unfortunately, well, I could take you, you know, to the farms and grow it right now. They're but, not that far from my house. They're not far right. from the racetrack where I go racing. That's, oh, I mean, oh, in, I, I, where I, I live in Northwest Ohio, I don't care. It's been how, what over a hundred years now, since well over a hundred years since Native Americans roamed the Ohio Valley, and we're talking about every tribe. You know, you got to understand the geographics of Ohio. You have the Saint Joseph River, or Saint John, Saint Joseph Joseph River that runs all the way. To Canada, through the Ohio Valley, all the way down to Florida. And it's a violent river. It can be it, in certain it, areas. I, it, I've, it, I've actually ca kayaked some of it. it, it it's for, for, for lack of a better term, um, the Ohio it, 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 and the St. Joseph's, um, it, it, it is, a, a, as a former diver, well, here's another thing for you. Can you tell me which direction the Ohio, the St. Joseph River flows? It actually flows in reverse. Yep. It flows, uh, uh, it, it, it flows um, south to north. It, it is one of the very few rivers in the world that actually flows in the reverse direction. But it is also what, you know, a lot of people say, oh, the Mississippi, it, it, it's one of the... Uh, the most dangerous the ohio is probably it when you look at the complexities <coughs> of these rivers you have to understand that the, the geographical uh anomalies and the geographical forces of these regions to understand uh what is actually going on in these regions but the Ohio and the St. Joseph's in particular tend to claim more divers' lives every year than uh, any other river. Um, you know, it, it's, I'm not, um, I mean, look at the look at the phenomena we do have within the tri-state area of Michigan, Indiana, and Ohio. You have the for 
the Great Lakes has their own version of the Bermuda Triangle. You know, there's been some interesting stuff discovered in certain parts of Michigan that, I mean, st like a stone hedge that's underwater. I mean, there's some interesting things when we start talking about this. And we do see, you know, like I said, when we're talking about our history of the, of our, the founding of our country, there was a big push for a lot of them. And it's just not, and I don't think it was just about the maze either. There's, you know, just from talking to Native American, the spiritual aspect of what they considered Ohio. Well, me and you discussed, you know, Ohio is not, the people think the Ohio is what, you said Pawnee? Yeah, it's the Pawnee. But, well, it's actually not. Well, yeah, the, the Pawnee, the Shawnee, the Blackfoot. But the Mohicans. Yep. But it's actually, the name Ohio is not a Native word. No. No, it is not. It's actually what they, it's called, it's Inakian. Yep. Which stands for the land of woe. And what a lot of people don't understand it is, you know, you hear the woe. Okay, well, now we're going to take this into the urban folklore end of things. You, you hear the term in the Bigfoot community of whoops and the Ohio, what what is commonly referred to as the Ohio call. Well, you have to understand that the, the, the whole of the sum here around that mythology but in order to understand that you, you have to understand the land of woe um and the the not just the geological but the geothermal um upflows that come out of certain pockets that move for unexplainable reasons you know you and i have talked uh, on at different times about it, it, it in the back rooms about these um for lack of a better term these sonic booms yep. that seem to be happening in, in at different times and in different places that are are truly unexplained therefore it would fall under it into that urban uh folklore and and or urban legend um that are coming from very deep um in on the earth and, and thus making it, it actually creates a, a a sonic boom now what is very interesting is these tend to be being reported usually between thanksgiving and, and ishtar or Easter, um, it is usually when we're we're hearing the most uh, of. <coughs> sorry, um, is when we're hearing most of these. Well, in the northern uh, portions of, of the United States, well, the Earth it, it is very cold, so the the tectonic plates are going to be shifting. A little bit and it's going to create a a, a a different geomagnetic sound and at a certain point those those tectonic plates are going to shift enough that it will create these anomalous booms that i guess it, it is maybe the the only um logical explanation that wow. that i can uh tell people i mean um, they're for the longest i mean me, when i was growing up it's not so much now but when i was growing up with my dad and stuff for the longest ohio used to be ufo central oh yeah and and it it, it it's you know, not so much anymore but i mean i you know like i said i'm not a i'm not a fan of the ufo thing 
All right. Well, but let, let me... I, I, I did have my own experience to where there was like I was coming to, coming home from work one night. I was out on twenty, no twenty A, coming from Wauseon, going towards West Trinity, in a small little blip of a town called Burlington, and semi was pulled over, a couple cars was pulled over, and I'm looking, look up, just have to look out the driver's side window, and I see this triangle hovering above the field. It's towards winter because the field's been flooded. Been, it wasn't plowed yet, but it, it was been cut. Everything corn was already c- combined, and we all got out of our. I pulled over. We all got out of our cars and watched this thing for a good ten minutes. People were pulling over. Well, we didn't have our cell phones back in. You know, nineties. The cell phones we had were big, bulky, and really good yep. to take pictures with. <laughs> but <laughs> it, it, then all of a sudden, it just shot straight up in the air, and in a blink of an eye, it was gone. But it went in a direction to one of my the spot that I was talking about where I do plan on it's on my bucket list till this day to do a paranormal investigation there. And I know it's on your bucket list. Yeah, it is. But we also right. know it's on, on Josh Gates's box bucket list. Yeah. Well, okay. So I'm going to spin this. Um, I'm going to spin this conversation 180 degrees on its face. Um, oh, one more thing. But what's the other important facility you might as well say it's the second area 51 right patterson right pat in ohio right at at dayton ohio okay but so i'm gonna spin this um and you know because anytime you mention right pat you know now you're you're starting to go back into that um political ish um spectrum and i i i'm I have to be very careful there. I've already been warned twice today. Um, to have a cup of shut that up. Um, I think I got my warning earlier today. But um, no, I, I got a very direct. Um, and it was not a polite um, uh, manner. But so I'm going to spin this conversation uh, 180 degrees on its face. Oh, I don't I don't, don't want to talk about right, Pat, anyway. Uh, I'm good because I don't either. Um, but I'm going to spin this 180 degrees on his face. Um, and, and this is something because I've had UFO experiences. I have experienced time loss. Legitimate. Uh, that, that I've experienced. I've experienced the time loss thing, but it has nothing to do with that. The you, Anything to do with UFOs or something. That, yeah. And I actually, that that's the one spot I do would warn you and Josh Gates about. That spot it, it, is notorious notorious for time loops well it, it's I, and I, lost time so, some of the things that I, I i'm going to go on the record with tonight i have never went on record about maybe if uh, we stop buffering and well first time for everything i guess um you know i'm gonna go on record as something that i've never I, I, on any platform with anybody um i have had time loss um issues um directed directly surrounding you apology um but you know what one of the things that i have uh had vehement um literal visceral arguments with the 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 whole you know and, and this is the problem with yeah you're fine on my end okay this is must be mine um but um you know, it's the 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 problems that I have is when you're you're dealing with um, the, anywhere in this this genre is you have the 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 very staunch believers in, in ufology, and then you have the Bigfoot people. They're on one end. You have the 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 UFO people on the other end and, and you and got people like me because you guys haven't heard my side of bigfoot stories yet. right but here's my my thoughts and this and, and this is based on my own personal experiences um because i have had experiences with both and, and the very interesting and, and i don't know if this is just um geologically uh because of where i live um but i've experienced this in, in a few different areas so this has nothing to do with um area uh, of location that i i live in 
but it's very interesting that prior to Bigfoot experiences, um, and I, I've had a few um, pretty significant um, experiences um, in the, the Wisconsin, the upper uh, Mississippi, Wisconsin River Delta, um, that prior to a, a Bigfoot encounter, there was a, a that uh, bright light type. Uh, I, I want. I hate to use the term orb. Um, appear, and, and then within a minute to three minutes later, um, a, a a Bigfoot esque type being emerges. So, is there a a direct correlation between Bigfoot and the the bright light uh, from above? Are they, is there a, a direct correlation? Is there that outside possibility that they could act because we have not yet found actual legitimate remains? We never will. No, we won't. Um, are they inter, uh, interdimensional? Um, you know, these are all questions that, that I've, I've asked. Um, now well, I let have me pose at... this one to you. All and right, you guys can get my general idea of this concept of this and my thoughts. This is why I don't have no, don't hold no credit credit to the UFO and ET thing. Because you know, me and you kind of discussed this the other night. You know, with the you know, you remember wrong up. Why is it it's a certain time period? What? Why was it written in Sanskrit? Well, because of the Dead Sea Scrolls. That's where we first get because we talk about Enochian and and Anunnaki, or basically Nephilims. That's what we're talking about, Nephilim. This is actually where I'm going with this. Is with the Nephilim. You know, I, I've heard enough, sat down, and had enough discussions with these elders, plus my own study into Enochian and Anunnaki, to basically come to the conclusion that. We all know, especially from the biblical sense, you, know, you got to take everything. That's the key important. That's why I want to do the, this this type of content at least once a month on here because it gets you stuck, it gets you stop thinking about just one side. There's so many stories. You have your written stories. You have the stories like I got to experience sitting down with all these Native American elders. Beautiful, beautiful stories. But that that is actually how oh, oral mean, tradition, right? I mean, it's just like what well, people know history. about John Rutledge. I know a lot more sure. and a lot different because I've got to read his journals, his writings. I've got to hear the stories that were passed down through the family, which doesn't equate to what is written necessarily written about him. So you well, got to take everything. You got to even take well, the science. You got to be well, able to sit, sit, sit there and sit, sir, or I don't got my teeth in, so sort of certain words I can't pronounce. Sift through everything to get the truth because it's scattered. Well, can, I'm I'm going to throw one thing at you. Well, let me finish, let me finish my uh, before I get sidetracked. You know I'm very easy to sidetrack. Um, but my theory is, and it's quite simple. Nephilim created the race of giants. So why not the race of giants and the Nephilim? Are we dealing, what we are dealing with when we talk about Bigfoot, when we talk about ETs, extraterrestrials, and I'm going to use the extraterrestrial sense as the biblical sense from the Dead Sea Scrolls because that's when they, everybody started talking about UFOs, these fiery chariots coming from, coming down from the sky, the Egyptian gods, giants um in the bible there there's a they talk about this civilization that was just feared and from what i was able because not much and it's hard to research that aspect of it but from what i've been able to gain it was one of the descendants of the giants which we know the Nephilim's king fallen angels or 
mated with the humans, created the Nephilim, which was the race of giants. So what we're dealing with, I think, and it explains a lot when you're talking about Bigfoot, how you just can never see them, you can't find them, how they just disappear. You know, I can see that. We can also see it through some of the writings and hieroglyphs of the Aztecs, Incas, of the Native Americans, the Bigfoot, Shawnee, Blackfoot, Apache. They all have these certain topics, clear down to when we start getting into the skinwalkers. Are we dealing with descendants of Nephilim? That's the question I pose that nobody asks, nobody talks about when it comes to the Bigfoot community, when it comes to the UFO communities or the occult communities. They just want to, they just stop it right where their beliefs are. They don't go further into it. They don't see the correlations of all these different stories from these different cultures, from the Native Americans to the, the frontiersmen and women, stuff that's been passed down. It gives you a whole new perspective and a way to look at things. All right, now you go. Now um, you sidetrack me. Now, you know, it, it's, you know, not many people um, have, you know, and, and it's very sad that a lot of people don't take the time. And I don't think it's that they don't take the time, but, you know, we have a, a library of quote unquote Congress for a reason. And, and, and granted, some of the things that are Don't are get me in, started on the restricted sections. Um, you know, there there are some areas that um, it, it and I've I've been all through. I I, I it every time I I go out to the east, I try to spend as much time as possible there because it is history. I, I am a, a history junkie. A and in, in order to not mis uh, continue to make the same mistakes a a as those who walked before <coughs> us, it is it, 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 somebody who it, it is a strategist and whatnot. It is incumbent upon me to always be be looking uh, forever forward. You know, I, I say sempre avante for a lot of reasons, but I also have to be looking at those who have walked before me it's important and understand where their follies went awry and sometimes those follies though very painful to read and, and, and very painful to sit there and, and and take in. It is essential to the furtherance of humanity on every level, be it philosophical, emotional, spiritual, personal development, Every area of life, it is essential that we take that time. And, and, and you know, because we are coming, are coming into that that time uh, uh, of the year. Sorry, I got to turn my heat down, or I'm just going to get roasted out of my office. Um, it, it, we're not that far away 
from powwow season again. We're only just a couple of months away, once again, from powwow season. And it is time once again. But unfortunately, the elders that were there perhaps last year, a lot of them won't be there this year. No. And, and, and so, you know, and, and a lot of people, you know, when they're they're driving around their their communities, wherever that is, um, they see an old folks home or whatever. They just dismiss it and they just mash their foot on the gas and they just they keep motoring on. But folks, that's where our our a lot of our urban and our our history. Um, some of it actually can be classified as urban legend. Some of it folklore. Some of it is is, is sheer conjecture um, at, at the very best. But that is where truly where we absolutely have to to be looking and thinking because you know I, I, unfortunately you and I you know there there's only five years difference between you and I but God, sadly nice to be young get yeah, you gee thanks make me feel old um but you know sadly you know we grew up in a culture and for for the for whoever finds this podcast a hundred years down the road, you know. Well, God, they're listening to this a hundred years down the road. I feel bad for them. Right, but you know, sadly, you know, we're in a culture that, um, you know, our parents, you know, and, and both my parents are gone. Um, my my mom, um, I, I'm told, um marched on D.C. And, and, and was part of the bra burning protest. My God, you know, how, how, how archaic does that sound like today? You know, how trivial does that sound by today's standards? Bra burning in D.C. I mean, there was you a know? lot of great civil rights movements but, that happened you know, in D.C. that most people have forgotten, don't even realize happened. That's one of them because I had completely forgot. I actually learned that in history class. Right, I but, have completely you, forgotten about that one. But you know, I mean that that that's you know, um, when, when you stop and think about things like that, you know, twenty years from now, thirty years from now, that ain't even gonna be taught. That ain't even, that ain't even gonna be a blip on the the radar of, of where this country was at. No, and you're actually right. But, that's the uh, da downside of. Society is advanced as we get more technologically advanced. It, 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 it's beyond that. It, it, it's, we have actually, our generation, sad to say, our generation. Our generation our is age, slowly becoming the urban and folk legends of past. It, it, our generation, though we are the generation that created the, the, the technology um, that we're I'm a skeptic on that one. We, it, our parents are largely, our parents' generation is largely in, in, in part, our parents' generation is largely in part um, responsible for the technology that we have today. But we fostered the evolution thereof of where it's at today um, and, and how far it actually has come. But it is. No, we're the generation that dropped the ball. That. Well, that that too, but it is also our generation, and it is our fault for allowing the not just the physical, but now the literal book burning to have become just that. It, it has become literal. You know, the book burn the term book burning very true started in the forties. Our grandparents' age. Book burning started. Oh, it started way before then. I can go it, out throughout each empire that conquered. They did it. 
but it, I mean, it really took off um, it, it, in the 40s. No, it didn't and, take off. It's been happening for since the founding of a hamlet. And they but, decided I mean, to conquer the next hamlet. And, well, we don't need them to be, we need them to be ed educated in our ways. We need them to forget their legends, their beliefs, their folklore. So but it, it, they eradicated it. And they kept the, just the parts that could build upon their society with the, what they deemed was worthy enough and good enough to make them superior. And they made sure the rest disappeared. I mean, I can go clear back to, we, our dynasties are wrong for e Egypt. We, they found, found archaeologists found that out already where pharaohs rewrote over or erased and wrote over the dynasties so right, our whole di the, timeline in the dynasty is completely off and wrong but there there was erasing of history really, so book burning has been happening for millennia but it things really went to a whole nother level starting no, they did. look what alexander the great did no he, he there wasn't nothing great about that man i mean the, the the stuff that he destroyed didn't deem deem worthy enough for his library is forever lost to history that was probably one of the greatest book burnings to ever take place that made what hitler did look like child's play I, 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 I could agree with that to a point. However, it was the the global aspect of, of what Germany and, and that whole group that was with Germany really fostered in World War II that really brought things home to America um and, and that term book burning really really took hold but it's been in our generation where we we literally we didn't just drop the ball we shot the damn thing um no, repetitively and, and, and we did nothing to to undo Except for a few of us, you know, that that have um, tried to to undo um, well, the. Well, look at the analogy. What we grew up with, and several generations have grown up with after Gen X, the millennials, and a couple of them. What's on the web is on the always will be forever on the web. We know that not to be true. Oops, they, yeah. they, they're even now deleting the stuff that was put in the archives to be protected and never could always be found. We've seen it. We've documented it where it's been removed. I, I have so many things that I, I've actually put up. In That's places. not an urban legend or a folklore anymore. No, no. It's, I, I put things up in the way back um, and, and on archives. Um, and, and in fact, actually, I was <coughs> um, notified today that my um my both uh, of my archive uh dot org uh pages that i had um that were were not some of it w was podcast orientated and, and some of it w was from my my musical stuff both pages have been eradicated not just removed they have been eradicated and it's not because of inactivity completely eradicated that's digital book burning oh yeah i mean i, I like i said i know I, i'm not gonna name his name but when it comes to talking about special certain things from ohio folklore and legend well i mean he's the he's a direct descendant of the, the guy that they basically made project blue book after you know, if there yeah, was but really... the find that they found that we've talked talked about in the back rooms, and I'm not going to discuss it any further than that because I gave my word I want it. But the shit that they found and that was forced to be covered up in my own fucking backyard, so to speak, it, it's it it's it's why I want to talk about these things because. 
it's there. You know, my one friend, he always says, you want to, you want to know what, you want to know what, te- you want to know what technology and advancement other cultures and people had in society before you, all you got to do is grab a shovel and dig. Yep. Yep. You know, and, and that is a topic, um, as dangerous. I mean, I mean, I think the one, the in the last seven years, the one thing that blew my mind, everybody remembers or, the Orwell Dam, right? Yep. Well, here's what I did now. And I I'm, I, I don't like giving people, dropping people's name, but I, I give credit where credit's due. And I still follow him. I, I enjoy some of the stuff he does. Enter the stars. Um, Are, are you aware that the individual um, live streaming oh, has stopped? I forgot about that. Did you catch it? Yep. Yeah, well, I'm st- I still have the wheel. It's getting ready to start. Streaming is on. Okay, we're back. <laughs> um, well, kind of. Yeah. Okay, we're back now. The there's an individual that actually lived at Oroville who documented everything that happened at the Oroville Dam. Literally documented everything. He hasn't been seen. Literally has not been seen in any way. All the his, his phone has went completely dark. Even his vehicle's GPS has went dark. Now I know what vehicle, what kind of vehicle he had. Everything. Oh, okay. That's interesting. And, and, and he documented Everything from the very beginning uh, of the Orville uh, catastrophe that happened, and, and your your uh, urban don't ask. Okay, um, that, that was weird. Um, but I mean, it it was no. What's weird is I can't see this background, nor can I see my video. How I'm sitting above you. Yeah. Over on Jitsi. Like I'm not even there, so I, I don't know. <laughs> and, and, and your 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 chat lo the um the urban uh chat uh, the the urban your uh picture that you made that's a a a wild logo that's like all that's doing is just like flashing. Yeah, I know. Like, that that's weird, but you know. Um, but I'm I upgrade, can't, so now I can't see anything. It, it, it is so weird that um, the individual that first began to uh, cover <coughs> everything with his phone at the very beginning of the Orville uh, on the Feather River, all of his stuff, everything, his vehicle, GPS, stuff, everything has went completely offline. His phone... It, it, all of his banking stuff, everything has frozen. Nobody knows where he's at. Hey, you might want to hold up for a second. Uh, I don't know if we're coming in at all. I'm getting an error message, and I'm not sure what's going on now. We're live. I can see that. Is it buffering on your end? No. Okay, so I've, got, I've got this weird message going on. Like I said, <laughs> we'll just keep going then. I mean, it, 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 it's bizarre. Um, you, you want to talk about some strange stuff. As soon as we start talking about the Orville Dam, um, you know, the Orville Reservoir, that's man-made. But it's what was... Oh, now it's straight. Now it's fixed itself. 
Well, it was fixed. For, now it's flashing again. But it's what was covering uh, the Orville, um, what had been there prior to uh, the creation uh, of the, the Orville Dam and, and the historical relevancy uh, of what was there before. And, and you want to talk about legitimate urban uh, uh, history and, and how much gold was actually found at Oroville. Um, you can't measure the amount of gold that was found at Oroville um, on the Feather River. You, you can't, they don't make a, a, a even these ocean going uh, cargo vessels could not hold the amount uh, of gold and ore that was pulled out of the ground at just at Oroville. Not many people know or realize that an entire town was flooded in order to create the reservoir above the dam on the feather. An entire town was flooded out. I'm talking to Whoa. We're, we're talking cemeteries. An entire civilization was wiped out. And I think we lost live streaming. Did we? Um, I, I just heard it. Um, no, that was me. I oh, joined okay. in from my phone. Oh, okay. Trying to figure out what the hell's going on. Oh, okay. Um, that was weird. Um, but, you know, a, an entire civilization that had been there for, for 250, 300 years was flooded out in order to create the Oroville Reservoir and, and, and dam. So you want to talk about ur urban folklore and, and, and legends. Well, th good, because I'm about to blow your mind then. What you, what you, all, all you said is true, very true. And this is after doing a lot of research. And then, like I said, all, cre all credit for this goes to uh, Enter the Stars. What I'm about to say. Phenomenal he, channel. He was able to because he's big in, into he's a bit he's a huge Christian. Yes, he is, and, and he, very unapologetic about it too. Doesn't need to be, but he's also open minded, to the right. most part. But he's big into biblical research and finding places. Orville Dam is the Sullivan Mines. Yeah. Owned by Queen Mashiba. And he actually starts pointing out places around that area and matching up their biblical names to what yep. they were known during that time period. So that's why there's so much gold in Orville. That's why they put that dam up there so nobody could get to it anymore. Or keyword. Or there's a reason why it was named Orville mm -hmm. because of the rich or and, and it wasn't just gold. Oh no! A the richest silver came that has ever been found on the planet came out of the Orville area. The rich, the very highest quality gold that had ever been found in, in, in what we know in, 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 of California was found off the Feather River. You know, most people think, you know, the Mayflower, Christopher Columbus, and them, they were the first ones here. We know that's not true. We know the Vikings were here before that. But now, <coughs> we also know that the Egyptians were here. You know, the, in archaeology, we can go back to the pharaohs and Egypt. They never, they said they never came this far east. Or, well, 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 what they, we know... They, no, we now know for a fact they did because of the uh, cocaine mummies. Well, the the, the cocaine mummy is... Uh -uh, it, plural. 
There's more than one. We knew for a fact that the Phoenicians were here <coughs> more than 300 years pre uh, Eric the Erickson expedition. 300 years. We, we know this for a fact. Um, and, and we know that the, the dating on the cocaine mummies predates that expedition by a, a, as much a, as I think it's somewhere between, um, 1000 and, and 1200 years, somewhere in that, that proximity. If I remember reading the report, right, I, I, I could be, um, off a little bit on that. But I have seen too many different reports, and now I, I'm seeing reports that a, a, another um, Egyptian mummy has been thawed out um, in northern BC, Egyptian style wrappings that had a, a bacteria more than 4,700 years old. They thawed out a 4,700 year old bacteria from an, a, a mummy that had Egyptian style mummification procedures done. What, what are we, what kind of, uh, of uh, things are, are, and it was not the Canadian authorities that found this, by the way. It was actually uh, American authorities that that uh, unearthed this. Um, and, and it was allowed to be brought back to the United States, by the way. So what, what kind of biological um, cocktail are, are we facing that's more than 4,700 years old? Um that was unearthed and this was unearthed um about 90 days ago well, i mean that the, is the, the danger to archaeology when you start digging and you start unearthing stuff you you have a chance to un re reintroduce something that's been laying dormant because we know most bacteria they never die but uh, uh, you know what Short what's interesting you know what what what's interesting you know we we seen what what happened to uh the the party that uh unearthed king tut's um tomb we saw what happened to them yeah, well dead. you know what's interesting it is is over 80 percent of this excavation party guess what probably the same thing i mean like i said you don't <laughs> I mean, you, you, it's just like doing paranormal investigations. You don't know what you're going to be bringing home with you. They found this sarcophagus, and that's exactly what it was termed as. They found it more than 47 feet below the permafrost. 47 feet below the permafrost line well, see, in my, North. My, now, my only question is, what the hell was they digging that deep for to begin with? The only way, now I I, I understand, um, because you, you, lidar, even sign, your seismic scanners and sonic scanners can't penetrate that deep. So why were they digging that deep in the first place? The the only way that I I, I can unlock some of that myth for you and I, how that this could have been found. You're you're correct, lidar. There's no way lidar. Uh, Ground well, finding radar that can't go that far down. Lidar. A, 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 actually, yes. Um, no, it can't. So, I've used it. <laughs> sonic, so, sonic, uh, sonic impulse. Um, can't penetrate uh, down that far. Yes, it can. Sonic can actually go down to bedrock. I've, uh, I've, be, I've got to use those toys, and no, they cannot. They, Not, the, they the, cannot even give an accurate reading that far the, down. The, the sonic drilling, uh, because they've actually. If you're drilling, yeah, but that goes back to my point. Why was you digging that far? 
because there's nothing that could they would give them any reason to go down that far what was the the technique that was used is the exact same technique that was used on oak island sonic drilling it is the technique that was used however it, it, it's my belief that as just as a, a lot of the it goes the, back to my original question why were they digging in that area in that spot going down that far because that shit's expensive we're talking millions of dollars to get the rig out there and go down there so they were specifically targeting that area what was in that area there there was um one of the uh there was a few years ago there was a a a a press release and, and there's actually it came out in a tv show um, about a lot of the the offshore treasure hunters it, and there have been uh, a whole lot of, of star maps that was by one of the astronauts uh, from the Gemini program so Gemini is going to take you back a few years um, that have been you have been targeting and, and looking at a lot of these sunken ships off the uh, surrounding uh, the the entire world and, and identifying locations of sunken ships from more than a hundred years ago that people had completely forgotten about and, and I uh, literally identifying within plus or minus three feet uh, of literal GPS locations now they're, 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 in order to do that you're having to use pretty sophisticated equipment now the Gemini uh, project that software was not it was good but it was not that specific so they're using satellites in space that is capable uh, of seeing things so much farther and so much deeper and if that's the case then why have they not found other things that are, are, are far more pressing and, and, and far more relevant where human lives are absolutely at stake. And, and you know where I'm going with this. Well, I mean, yeah, it's, it goes back to, I don't want to go politics. Right. But I mean, it, 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 if they have the capacity to go look for things like um, something that is 47 feet below the permafrost line now permafrost line in, in, in Canada you're, you're you're talking um 107 feet um roughly at, at 90 days ago literally 107 feet below the per, below the permafrost it, at 90 days ago you're having to go that deep um you're gonna need satellite technology for that that's the only way that you're going to legitimately be able to see what lays below the solid ground and, and is this something that um starlink possibly could have been used for again you're, you're starting to cross over into the political realm it or is it it folklore um well, i mean it is folk folklore because it, it goes back to the, my point why were they digging in that spot to begin with right what drew right. them there obviously they had some information that something was there as we as i've mentioned especially when we start dealing with these giant sarcophagus that are giant the the sarcophagus in question you know they when, disappear when, it, 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 oh, it, it, it's never been put on, on it, it was never photographed. At, at least the photograph has never been released. Oh, it's been photographed and documented, but it never gets oh, released. It, it, it's from what I've been able to, to gather. It was under seven foot, which most Egyptians were under, uh, well under the six foot, uh, even with their cer ceremonial headdress um, would have been at, at the very most seven foot 
um, in, in, in length. Um, so you're you're literally looking at looking for a a legitimate uh, needle in a haystack at, at, at that point. But we've also been finding in, in a lot of other places um, over in Siberia they've been making stunning, stunning um, through using uh, water jet technology finding a lot of um, very, very strange um, things. At, 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 and Siberia, you know, that's at, at, at yeah, certain times of the we year. Might well go, we might as well go Antarctica. Um, Admiral Byrd. Yeah. Um, the Nazis, I mean. And, 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 let, let, and let, there let, is. There's been recent scientific research done that they've found that it parts of Antarctica used to be a tro tropical. And, and, and you know what's so interesting? You know, I, I, I had a very unique experience. My, one of my former um, medical doctors was actually the chief medical director on Antarctica for nearly 20 years. So envision some of the backroom conversations that was had um about the things that didn't happen there yeah. as, as uh we'll say um did, did they happen did they not happen um well, you know you know the worst part of it is especially <laughs> when we discussing the admiral bird incident yeah we'll where is know. she where is she We'll never know. We'll never. Where, where, where is she? You mean he? Or he? Um. We'll never know because that generation's almost gone. Where, where? That was during World War Two. But where, where, it, it, where ha, has Admiral Byrd since uh, removal from uh, office? He's been removed completely from the public. Yeah, I, 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 I have reason to believe um, that Admiral Byrd has been removed from the living. Well, yeah, I believe that too. And but he's also that age too, so it's one of those, you know. That's what some of the topics we'll have on here because it is urban and folk legends. It's that history that's been lost, and you pointed it out elegant when you were talking about the book burning stuff. It's happened. That history, we're be our history is becoming urban legend and folklore. You know that's why I want to focus on some of these things. I want to keep it away from the politics as much as possible. But there is a role there, and it goes you back know, to what I, I said I, with the Native Americans. I mean, the Trail of Tears. It happened for a reason. They didn't know, want I, people to know this knowledge. They didn't want to know these secrets that they were. That they've been using for power. You know, there's a reason why we've never found Bigfoot. There's a reason why every time they find one of these giant sarcophagus or giant bones, it disappears. And people are hushed up about it. You know, it's one of those things. Like I said, most people can't step outside their boxes or most people can't don't realize that all this information out here, all this knowledge, there's truth in all of it. You just got to pick it out, siphon it from the the rhetoric, the pro doc and doctor, right? psychological warfare stuff of it. Pick it out. Talk with people. Talk with your elders. I mean, if you ever get a chance to talk with some Native American elders, listen to their stories. Because their stories have been passed down for generations. Unfortunately, our Native Americans that are true Native, true, still, still, true, true bloodline, they're almost extinct. You know, that's what I, I was looking at. At um, every year, we have a, a because I have the distinct privilege of, of growing up. Uh, uh, I mean, I'm getting close to where I can claim Blackfoot. 
you know, I, I, as I the have, years go by, because the, the percentage of what it, what, what it means to be acknowledged as having that DNA strand has decreased. What, I mean, it's it, like what? What is it now? One third or one fourth? One fifth? One sixth? Uh, um, one sixth uh, it, it is the current standard now. I believe. Um, it it, it changed. It, you know. Th- that that used to um, be one. Why, uh, why, why they push so hard for it? Uh, it it, it their seems, identities. It, it changes from administration to administration, and it's and it's very, very upsetting um, to well, me. It's not just upsetting. But, it's the fact they've pretty much all well eradicated all the Native Americans. But you know, I I grew up, or I I not only did I grow up. But I live, one of my, my residents is on, I, I am literally, when I say I live in the, the area of, of the signing site uh, uh, of the 1825 treaty, I literally mean I live on the site uh, uh, of the 1825 because I, I am literally six blocks. <clears throat> six city blocks from the original signing site for, of the 1825 treaty. There's not many people that can say they know exactly categorically where the signing site uh, of maybe the biggest farce, the biggest fuck you to the Native American people of America. And I and I don't say that lightly. Please don't mis- don't mistake those words. But it is legitimately the biggest fuck you that was ever handed to all of the tribes represented. And where my home sits, I you know I I it would be nice if I could just stick a shovel in my backyard the only problem is is i have about 300 miles of fiber optics and gas lines in my backyard so i can't just stick a shovel in my backyard and find out what history lays in my backyard you know it'd be really nice to know what nations camped out on my property in 1825 See, it's I, awesome because I, I can still do that, but that's and that's the weird thing. It's been well over hundreds of years since you know the Native Americans settled in the Ohio Valley in Ohio. But any time a farmer plows his field, you can walk behind them or right after and still pick up arrowheads. Pick it, up it's... arrowheads from various different tribes throughout that. Most people didn't even realize we're in the Ohio Valley. All right, here, here here's one for you. All you have to do it, 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 it is type in the Battle of Red Mound. Mm-hmm. Familiar? I, 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 I literally am about 35 minutes from when I, uh, of, it wasn't, uh, it, it is in the top 10 bloodiest battles that was fought between the the French and the Indians. That's why it's called the Battle of Red Mound. I mean, and that's uh, not very far from my home. And still to this day, every year we're finding full intact arrows and, and, and still intact arrowheads. After all these years, we're still finding these artifacts. But by if you post a photograph of something like that on any social media site, oh man, you got about fifty people pounding on your door and confiscating that and claiming that that that's historical antiquities. And if you don't relinquish it, um, oh my God, it 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 it's bad. Well, yeah, uh, it has the potential to rewrite history. It, well, it, 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 it's 
even deeper than that, un unfortunately. Um, you know, and my state. I mean, let's keep it real. That's why they don't talk about the Aztecs and the Inca being all the way up here in the United States. I mean, we're talking up into Montana, Colorado, Idaho. They were in Wisconsin. Wisconsin. We know that they were also in Iowa, uh, so, uh, South Central Minnesota. Um, they, they didn't go like um, up into the Iron Range. We, we do know they stopped at the Iron Range be, for a, a multitude of reasons, um, partially because of, of, of uh, tribal uh, fighting uh, that was very vile. Um, once you get up into the Iron Range of uh, Minnesota, it, 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 it took a very different turn that um, the Inca and the Aztec were not prepared for. Um, and unfortunately, those battles happened during this time of year that they just simply were not capable and or ready to be able to endure. Um, you know, and so to that end, you know, are there remains uh, of Inca and Aztec there in, in the Iron Range? I would say, yes, there absolutely is. Will those, um, will it ever be publicly announced? I, I highly, highly doubt it. It kind of has. Josh Gates gotten into some of it a little bit on Earth of it. And then we get, you know, we got the uh, mystery of blind, 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 uh, blind Fog Ranch on actually tonight, there's actually another good one in the, it's going to, it's actually, I think it's on before or after um, uh, Gold Rush, where they found all these gold bars, then the government took over, came over, claimed the land, which happens a lot in certain areas. You know, they'll Keep come talking, over, I gotta make a, I gotta grab a cup of tea they'll here. They'll come over and take, claim these lands for under protection or whatnot and it's to hide stuff you know i'm not trying to get, talk politics here but that's been the common theme with certain areas that are rich in these urban legends and folklores as you start digging into these things you find out that well either the land had rare natural resources or had some hieroglyphics you know and it is and if you actually study how where they located the Native Americans, where they gave them their basically detention camps, but you know this is your federal land, this is yours, this is where you'll stay. It is away from all their spiritual areas. You know, it, it's 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 funny. You know, start studying the ley lines of ley lines where certain things are built intentionally over the ley lines. That's something we'll get into too. I'm talking about that because ley lines play into some of these legends and folklores and myths because it's an energy that's strong. I think that's what Andrew was talking about. You know the the mysterious booms we were, we've been hearing reports of for the last six years. You know, and some of the key areas, there's some major ley lines going through those areas. Like I said, there's so much out there. There's it's hard to pinpoint, and you know it's good to question these things. Have talks. I think I'm getting close to that another hour mark, but you know. What do you guys want to hear, hear talked about? You know, leave it in the comments if you made it this far. Because, you know, I want to talk about this. Tonight was just more of a, a fun night, just throwing the things that we're eventually going to focus on as an individual topic. <coughs> you know, there's so much. Really, there is so much. I know I kind of want to mainly focus on the United States and our history, but that doesn't mean that we won't go because, I mean, I've got descendants from Europe. I've got descendants from Brazil, 
Portugal. You know, Germanic tribes. I am, I mean, honestly, my family, other than 13 people, have not married out of the Irish German descent. I mean, we, my great, my uncle, great uncle, I mean, he, he didn't use ancestry, screw ancestry. He did the old school method, the old paperwork method, trans, dating, our ancestry. Yes, John Rutledge is part of our ancestry, but it goes clear back to the Mayflower. And it goes clear back past that. It's it. We just, we found out like 2009-ish, 2010. Shit, we owned it. Our family still had a castle. Couldn't afford to, you know, pay the, uh, the, the money that was owed to reclaim it, but yeah. I mean, I, I know my coat of arms. I've actually got pictures of my coat of arms. Family's coat of arms. You know, I didn't need no DNA, D, give DNA to find out my family's history. We did the research. We went through the paperwork, the books, and we found the journals. You know, I remember growing up, this is another part of urban and folk legends, family reunions. I loved going to family reunions because it was, I get to hear these stories. You know, oh, such and such that lives in Mich upper, the upper peninsula of Michigan. Yeah, she's got some skeletons in her closet. You know, she, she she's part, she's Blackfoot. And yeah, you know, I got to hear these stories of what it, it was like when they were growing up, the things they seen, things they experienced, and some of the urban legends that they shared. It, you know, I'm. It's sad to see the concept of family reunions has gone from gone to the wayside because that was the way families told their stories, passed their knowledge from generation to generation. I miss the family reunions. I miss the stories. I miss sitting around the campfire, telling urban legends, telling ghost stories, telling a personal experience. Man, if I told you some of my paranormal experiences, it was down, some of it was downright should have been should have been downright frightening and terrifying. Just to be honest. I'm back. Sorry about that. I That's needed right. to make some tea. <laughs> no, I actually got on a got on a little rant about family reunions. <laughs> no, yeah. seriously. I mean, it's pretty much all a dead concept. But man, the urban legends and folk legends I've learned from family reunions. Yeah, listening to the old timers share oh, their stories. Awesome. I I miss those. I mean, yeah, I miss them too. I mean, I'm going. I remember. I my grandpa and grandma said there was a family reunion. Let's go. I wanted to go. <laughs> I really did. And they knew it. They took me they took me places. I remember my best friend Dan. I remember I was you know, I met his aunt. His dad's like a dad to me. Still is to this day. I remember him take I remember his aunt one day we we had this event. He needed to well <laughs> The story of my life, the people I run into that's, you know, in, that's fam their families are part of American history. The vet, vet, he was a Vietnam vet, Robert E. Lee. And yes, direct descendant of Robert E. Lee, clear down to the actual getting money from the government because of his name, because of his lineage. I mean, obviously, I'm friends with descendants of Andrew Jackson. And, well, he needed to go to the VA hospital. I mean, we call, he was, they, the, him and her boyfriend, they were, those two were best friends. You know, we call them suicide vets. One, one was diabetic, and they were alcoholics for real. I mean, Robert Freely, he, he loved his scotch. 
Oh my God, did he love his scotch. He'd give us 500 bucks. $200 went for his scotch. The rest was ours. You get some pretty good scotch for oh a couple God. hundred bucks. The scotch he drank, oh my God, it wasn't cheap. Yeah, but, uh, that's why I said you could get some pretty fly <laughs> scotch for... He's the one that actually got me hooked on scotch, drinking scotch. <laughs> yeah. When we were young and dumb, right? But anyway, um, so he ended up, we ended up having to take him to D.C., to the VA hospital. Well, he was one of those. He played the game. He made them, everybody, because he was in a wheelchair, kind of, sort of. But he played it to where, you know, he needed help all the time. He didn't. I seen right through it, and he knew I did. Well, one day, he gave. he's like, man, I'm going to go here. I'm going to get this treatment. It's going to take two months. Here's three blank checks. You have the first of the month, you can cash them for anywhere up to six grand. He goes, but I expect you to be back here in two months to pick me up. He doesn't say I wasn't back here in two months. I was on my way somewhere else for a very long vacation. But I ended up having to deal with that because I had three blank checks and generally you leave. And well, where's that? VA hospital. That's where I dropped him off at. Well, his family, oh, he doesn't want nothing to do with his family. All they want him for is his money. And he told me that. But we end up going from there to Tennessee, out around, uh, uh, what's the name of the place? McMinnville. So, you know, Rock Island, where the falls are, where they shot the Rocky scene. Or yep. was it Rocky? I think it was Rocky. But, you know, that area. Oh, man, I had a blast. I was all over the place. I was going into the mountains, into the valleys, the hollers, learning things, seeing things, hearing their folklore and stuff then. I came back, man, I'm like, man, I don't want to be here. So I'm like, get on the phone, call Dan. Hey, come pick me up. He's like, man, I don't got a job. I'm broke. Man, I'll pay you for gas. We'll get something to eat. Come pick me up. He's like, you got money? I'm like, I got money. He's like, well, how much? I don't want to say over the phone. I got money. Come pick me up. As soon as he picked me up, man, I don't care. Where do you want to go? Let's go on vacation. He goes, well, I've never been to the ocean. My first trip to North, North Carolina. Out to Moorhead. <laughs> do that again. <laughs> then we end up in Tennessee, and I'm taking him places where he doesn't even know. I'm taking him to places where he's got family buried. And he's like, man, how do you know? I'm like, he's like, how do you know where all this place? Your, your aunt showed me. I tagged along with your aunt. We went everywhere. Met most of your family. I, I, I got around, but when I got around, you know, I'd always find myself hanging around with the older people, listening to their stories. That's how I knew where so much stuff was. I remember my grandpa and grandma take me all over Michigan, all over Ohio, to visit the old family grave sites. Hearing the stories, the history. I miss family reunions. I really do. Yeah, that's... Mi Michigan is another one of those. Oh, my God. Michigan's loaded. You know, it, it it isn't so much that, you know, yes, the lower has a, a, a lot of, of um, unspoken history, but the upper peninsula. Oh, yeah. You know, it, it's, you know, I, I obviously because, um, uh, I, I'm closer, and it's easier access to go to the to the upper than it is the lower for me. Yeah, I got to uh, go completely through the lower to get to the upper. It, it's for me. It, it's easier to go. Um, and I hate going across it, the back of our bridge. No, it, it's go across there when there's a forty or fifty mile an hour uh, wind, and that. <laughs> That really have done that. It, it, it that really test your um, driving ability. Um, let, 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 let's just go there. But you want to talk about um, some <coughs> legitimate um, folklore? Um, you know, there, there's 
documented historical or there's documented uh, uh, accounts by the uh, Coast Guard uh, of vessels showing up on their ALS. Documented accounts of ships showing up on ALS. Yes, that's what it's called. The Bridgewater Triangle. That there is no way that those ships would have even come close to having the ALS technology. Yet they're showing up on ALS and from shore and even in the fog. And yet they're still showing up just a, 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 as uh, big as day, a, a, and they're there for 30 seconds, and then they're gone. A, a, and these aren't small ships. These are very, very big, big ships that there is no way that these ships could or would have had this technology, considering that some of these ships are more than 200 years old that their their final resting spot it, it, it is still unknown um by because of the the depth uh, uh, of lake michigan and, and yet they're there for a moment and, and and then they're gone so you you want to talk about urban myth and, and, and legend it's go to the up talk to some of the lighthouse um people that work those lighthouses they the some of the those people will tell you things that it, it, if you didn't believe in these the term ghost ship they'll tell you things that'll make you go sheet white yeah in a heartbeat i'm pretty sure when it's dealing with the great lakes the Bermuda Triangle effect. I'm pretty sure they call it the uh, Bridgewater Triangle. Yes, that is that that that's, that is the correct term. Um, and it's a it, very very doc, well documented phenomenon. It is. I mean, I I mean, just like me. I mean, I I love where I live because well, I doubt where I'm happy. I'd love to get far away from Ohio and never come back. But that's beside the point. But I, it's awesome because I mean, I have the Appalachians. The Appalachians, right, you know, drive across the state, get into the West Virginia. The Appalachian Trail runs parallel to Ohio. There's so much, I mean, oh my God, there's so much folklore just to deal with the Appalachian chain. I mean, you, you get Germanic folklore, you get, I mean, so much. I mean, and to realize that the Appalachians is still hasn't been fully invest or not investigated. What's the word I'm looking for? It's not been mapped. It's not been 100 percent mapped. It hasn't. We there's still places in the Appalachians that we know nothing about. And you know, <laughs> back to the uh, thing. There's a reason why we come down the West Virginia Pike. That whole area was pretty much well. Mountains and yeah. Anybody's been there, you know the signs. You know there's certain but you definitely don't want to go exploring anywhere where those signs are. All the way into the Black Forest. And the Black Forest is oh my god, a whole nother fucking level of We can go for days, years on end on the urban legend and folklore. That's just what I love about this. There's so much just here in our own backyard that we can discuss and talk about. And it doesn't have to go all the way into paranormal. Definitely doesn't have to go into politics. But politics does play its ugly role in these areas. I mean, MK Ultra, the using the, the universal soldiers that they tried to create constantly. That's not myth. It's not legend. It's not folklore. It's actually fact. But the, the, they try to say, "Oh, that's conspiracy theory. That's oh, it's just an urban legend." 
It was then decades go by, then documentation comes out. You know, look at all the documentation on the on the psychics that they've used. It's it's that's not a myth. Nope, it's been released. The doc the classified documents have been released on that stuff. You know, that's the things we want to explore. And I mean, it's, like I said, it's going to be, you, as you can see, it's a hodgepodge of everything. There's a bunch of stuff I missed. I mean, I didn't even talk about vampires yet. And that is, and every culture has their little vampire lore throughout the whole world. And truthfully, everybody's a vampire to some degree. It's just not. It's not the idea of drinking blood. That's that. That's the myth. That's the legend. That's the folklore. The it, actual it, truth is energy. It, it, and that that that's I where vampires is what it's called. I, I was just gonna say there. There's a difference between uh, the 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 different types uh, uh, of that that subset, and, and that's what. You know, and unfortunately, um, as we've uh, we're talking about in the green room uh, a, a few nights ago, um, that that level of, of chaos um, comes from that we're we're seeing more often than not that the level of cybamprism has become. So much higher today than it has in the last hundred years. Oh yeah, and it 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 it's not the the level that people understand. It it has gotten so much farther, more dangerous than people understand. Um, and, and the levity, and I I really haven't um really sat back and thought about it all, all that oh you don't want to it's depressing um no it's not depressing it's just downright scary well because of, of my knowledge um uh, of everything and, and i i've shared with you um in, in in the back room a lot of the things that have been going on with me and some of the conversation that I had regarding somebody else. Yeah. Well, you, you also know. heard my, like I told you, the other night when I was doing a podcast, I, I had. Yeah, I wouldn't, even call the, I wouldn't even call it, what is it, EVP? Yep. I wouldn't even call it that because it was audible through my headphones clear yep. as day. Yeah, I actually acknowledge it on a live stream. It's like, yep, was it? They were literally talking to Mike. Which after that, me and somebody had another discussion in the in the, in the back room, and yeah, that made me and his conversation when we started talking. About, yeah, that makes sense. But you know, there's a lot of stuff that we want to talk about and share because it is important. It's a, <laughs> It's not even a distraction because some of it, it's not myth and legend. No, it's not. No, it, it absolutely isn't. And, and actually, and, let me put it this way. Behind every myth and legend, there is truth. The myth and legend is usually created to disguise the truth. It's the uh, boogeyman story. Or why they'd carve out pumpkins and put candles in them. It's this, and it's not to scare the children. It's to protect the children, so to speak. But it's to protect the the ugly truths. Sometimes, and sometimes it's used to disguise what's really going on that they don't want people to know. Which is like a like what we. You know, the Native American conversations we've had throughout the night. That's my belief why they did what they did. Whoa! Did that was it. weird. But I felt that. 
it, it there was an I'm audio still feeling pop. that that was weird I got it on my end you actually red lighted my board something no, that just wasn't popped me. through that something came through oh yeah something came through it was still here and, and, and it, it red lighted my board and I don't have phantom power turned on on my board and it red lighted my board that was weird just for I put that the reason why I mentioned it people for whoever catches this at a later point I'm making this as a data point as to so that we can go back and actually um fact check the situation as to is this equipment or no that was not equipment no it was not. <laughs> No, I can tell you from my own personal experience of what I just felt and still kind of feeling. No, you yeah, know, that's a, that was spine tingling. It still is. I, I, I have four cats whose ears are flat back. And so, yeah. That, and, that, yeah. And, and three of the cats uh, are black. And yeah. And that's something. That's the reason. The only reason why I want to talk about some of this stuff because. Yeah, it's there. You know, some people, they I, I mean, there's a bunch of paranormal shows out there. And some of them are just jokes. The last one I watched, well, what's her name? Aisha or Akisha, something like that. Oh, my God. She, she just needs to stick to singing. You know, I, 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 I hate. I, you, you went there, so I, I'm going to go there. You know, well, just the heads up, everybody. I'll extend this for a little bit longer, but we're reaching that hour mark and the stream's gonna drop out. Don't go nowhere. If anything, I'll just break this down into three segments since I'm recording it at each hour mark. But it is gonna drop here in probably about three or four minutes, five minutes at the most. You we'll know, be right back. It, it, it's, I, I'm reminded, you know, you're talking about paranormal shows. Um, I'm reminded every time somebody mentions paranormal shows, I, I, I always get a chuckle about um, that that British paranormal group. <laughs> you know which one? The truth Yvette. seekers. No, um, it was um, uh, haunted something or other. Um, and it was, uh, is it the one that taps created? Um, no, it, it had Yvette Fielding and it, it was a, an all British cast. Okay. No, so never mind. Um, it, it's been gone like 10 years now, but, um, uh, it was like haunted, um, uh uk or some most haunted uk or something like that it, it was really kind of a um a, a spinoff uh, of uh uh ghi it, it for lack of a better word it was kind of a spinoff um but there was a the 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 funny part was uh, uh allegedly they were i think up in scotland and there was a, a a strange sound that that almost sounded like a fart and, and yvette fielding was the female tv host and, and, and she was like oh my god something it, it, it smells like or sounded like something farted and, and she's like oh yes yeah, something definitely farted and, and they this was broadcasted live from britain and it's like, oh my God. Um, it was hilarious as hell. And, and, and it the, the show only lasted like another two or three weeks after um that and, and it was gone. Um but yeah, I think um it had to do with Taps International um family, but it was just hilarious as shit, you know. Um, but you know, it, it's interesting, even some of the stuff that they use today, especially like the lighting to pick up the stuff. 
that's old dru druidic stuff because the dru druids are notorious for their blue lights or black lights yep the, for the ultraviolet spectrum so you know they're still taking their stuff from myth legend and lore like i said there is some truth there's reasons why you know the druids use those black lights or blue lights whatever you want to call them because it was in that uv spectrum and they're the ones that actually created black lights that we know of it was their understanding of technology of the time as, as to why we have what it what we enjoy as full spectrum um photography right well let's, uh, nikola tesla we wouldn't have evp the understanding of evps if it wasn't for nicholas tesla i mean talk that you want to talk about some urban legend of folklore surrounding him we wouldn't understand a lot of stuff if it wasn't for for him let, let, let's just be real i mean there's there's some documentation out there he was you know receiving communications through evps in a sense through the tesla machine the tesla coils i mean like i said it's everywhere we don't even we well there's a reason why and we're not going to go there it's not nothing to do with politics well yeah some of with a lot of things with us end up dealing with politics but it's also dealing with you know belief systems even though it's more acceptable today talking and discussing things paranormal and discussing urban and myth less legends and people aren't going to get too offended by it and it's not going to hurt their spiritual beliefs there is a point where we have i'm not going to cross that line of what needs to be over on kotr then and not over here but like i said and i do plan on doing some things talking about tesla i mean alistair crowley our government used him that most people don't even know live streaming has stopped the name of the TV show was Most Haunted. Most Haunted? Okay. Yep, I've seen it. The country of origin was UK. I'm streaming is on. You know, clear down to our... Uh, NASA program are one of our top scientists that end up somehow mysteriously getting blown up in his own house. Yeah, that's well, we don't want to talk about Patterson. Yeah, that, that you know, he, he, he's an interesting. Um, well, actually, got to be careful with that one because if we start delving there. Well, we also get into the occult mixing with science. Then you get the black magician himself, the creator of Scientology. And that's what certain individuals, you can actually, they'll come after you for saying that. We've already, me and that group's already had our little run in about that. And they, yeah, they don't like me. <laughs> but that's what he was called, Ron out of Hubby. and but the patterson stuff oh my god babylon rising the shit he did out in california the shit he did for that was it nasa yeah it was nasa i mean yeah he was a protege of crowley well you know clear down to they exchanged philosophies and ideas well, Patterson himself, you know, he's a very interesting individual. You know, what he was doing with that one Babylon project was downright yeah, yeah. scary. But, you know, there, there's a couple of, you know, since we're, we're in, in this topic and in this, in this genre, 
you know what it, 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 when you mention the name patterson you have to be specific because most people you, you mention the name patterson they they automatically are are gonna be thinking uh patterson gimblin yeah no and, and, and so you 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 have to be very specific um and, and you know both patterson's you know were prior to their to their exposure um of the things that they were doing and the things that they uncovered and were released and life thereafter um you know you really have to examine everything with a, a an extreme microscope um you know everybody likes to make reference to patterson uh, of the patterson gimlet but not many um will want to talk about gimlin who is actually the photographer Hey, I have a crisis I have to deal with here. Um, can we wrap this up, dude? I have a crisis I have to go deal with. Yeah, we can. Like I said, I didn't really want to go much past uh, three hours. I'm going to you go ahead and say what you need to say to wrap up. I'll close it out. Um, you know, a lot of people, they, they don't want to look at um, what, either Patterson or Gimlin did prior to their documentation of, of the so-called Bigfoot. They don't want to um, uh, look at where those guys were at um, and what they were doing prior um, to their ex quote-unquote exposure um and, and what brought them to to prominence and, and, and what led them after um you know because they they both their demise was very strange now the other patterson um He, 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 uh, again, you know, very, very strange. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm multitasking. I'm kind of dealing with the crisis here too. So, but uh, let, let's let's revisit this. Are you going to be in a uh, in a place next week that you're going to be able to pick this up? Uh, I will be, but I, I, I'm. I'm, I'll be move. I get the U-Haul Friday moving, moving everything. So, more than likely, I don't know. I'll be able to swing a podcast Saturday night. Let's definitely let's, not Friday. Like I said, next week is done. I'll, come the eighth is done because the internet will be off by the eighth. All right. So. Well, let, may, maybe because um, I'm going to be out the rest of the weekend. I'm going to be gone. Um, the rest of the weekend. Um, so let's. Um, we need to pick up back up on Patterson. Um, that is, uh, we, we really need to, uh, to deal with this on its own topic alone, I think. Yeah, this should, be, yeah, I agree. This should, should be a separate topic. But, you know, it just goes to show there's just so much out there that I don't think people under, realize or even understand. You know, I, I, I honestly do believe that Patterson, um, 
you know, both actually, they deserve their own. To, to be fair, you know, um, uh, they they both need their own um, space and, and, and their own. Um, their own bandwidth, I guess you could say. Um, but I'm going to be out, like I said, the rest of the weekend. Um, and, and I have a crisis that I have to go deal with. Um, so let, let, let's pick up on, 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 Patterson, on the Patterson topic in and of itself. Uh, and, and table this till then. I need to, to go deal with this, like, post-hastily here. So... Folks, y'all know where to find me. Um, y'all take care. God bless. Until we meet again, y'all be safe. I'm out of here. Like I said, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed. Like I said, something's going to be different. It's maybe once, twice a month. Or we might make, make set aside a weekend thing for this because I do enjoy talking about these things. Just as much as I enjoy talking about the main content on that we talk about on Sons and Daughters of Liberty. But I, I want something that's fun. That gets into gets into stuff different from the political stuff. I just want something fun. And to me this is fun. I know it's not going to appeal to most of my audience. That's fine. There's another audience out there that will appeal to. That's cool. It allows me to br bridge a gap and bring in a different audience that might not particularly care for some of the other stuff that's on here, but it'll open up to them who want to go at least check it check it out. So it's a benefit and it's a plus for this channel. And quite frankly, we need positive things to talk about. We need things that's going to make our minds work to question things. And it'll open the door to have serious talks. I mean, like I said, science is very much part of this. The medical field is very much a part of some of these legends and folklores. I mean, like we discussed with the mask, how Brie brought up the, how the plague masks were used. I, I, you know, there's so much, especially the symbology and stuff, the mask, what masks have been used through, throughout cultures and centuries. It opens up a whole field of topics, fun topics that we can talk, debate, <coughs> excuse me, probably argue about, you know, like me, I have my own perspective on things when it comes to like UFOs, Bigfoot, and I had my own personal experience with a UFO, but it never interested me, it wasn't, I don't know, maybe that's a skeptic in me when it comes to that area of the field and i know plenty of people that that's their field that's what they love to do and they talk your ear off about them they have good interesting points <laughs> it's just not my thing just like when we mentioned anaki and anunnaki the anunnaki thing is not my field to me i think it's all the same thing as you could tell from my Discussions with Bigfoot, Nephilim, Race of Giants, all being, you know, hey, I think that's, you know, the descendants or still descendants or Nephilim still walking on this earth today. And, I, and, you know, there's always the other reason why they want your DNA. They want that specific set of people that have that one specific type of DNA which I personally believe that specific type that they look for is another descendant of the Anak of the Nephilim but you know that's it's all things that just make you think and question I mean when we're in this genre of here, it's 
all up for debate. It's all up for question. We all have some, some of us have tons of personal experiences. Like, shit, just had one live with you guys and still feeling the after effects. I'm not quite sure what that was all about. But it definitely got my attention. It definitely got Bree's attention. Which was kind of impromptu, but it's not. Because, I mean, we're staring at a black mirror. That's what your TV, your cell phones, your tablets, that's what they are. The black mirrors. They're scrying mirrors. And look what you're scrying upon. And we will eventually get down on that road, too. It's not going to be right away, because I want to get people just to have fun first before we delve into some of those areas. I want this to be a fun experience for all of you. I want you guys to enjoy it as much as I enjoy talking about it. And I want you to be able to think and question things, because that's what this channel... Sons and Daughters of Liberty is all about to make you think and question things. It's, yes, I try to back a lot of stuff with history. But I want to make sure always that it's fun. Because this is what I want this to be, fun. And who knows, maybe it's not going to happen anytime soon. And like I said, I'm 50-50 on the, if I want to even go back into the field of doing paranormal research and investigations again. It's always, call, that calling's always there to draw me there. And, you know, I, I have to, you know, I got some equipment. I have to get some more, re-update some of the equipment. There's some stuff out there that I've, curious and trying out and there's old stuff that's been passed down passed down throughout history that I want to try and we'll save that for special occasions because like I said I want to have fun with this and when you get down that fork of the path yeah there's a thrill in it but there's a bunch of consequences that come with it And I've experienced those consequences in my life. Not want to revisit those. And that's the danger you take when you start doing, going into that field. Where I can just sit here and talk about it all I want. And you know, apparently you can't even do that. <laughs> what happened about 15, 20 minutes ago. But those are fun things. And I want to keep it fun. And like I said, nothing is off the table. If there's something you guys want me to talk about, leave it in the comments. Let me know. If it's something I don't know, more than likely I've got friends or know people out there that do. And I might be able to get them to come in and join in. Of course, then again, we know my how hard it is for me to get people to come in. But I do know people that would, it would that aren't affiliated with government entities and sign non-disclosure issues because you know that is some of the issues some of my friends that know these things they can't publicly talk about it and i respect that i don't like it but i respect it because i don't think i think that's the biggest problem in our world today is the secrets secrets do nothing but destroy because it's forbidden information they think it's forbidden from us why don't you want us to know that information what makes you so fearful of us having that information? And that's why we're going to be talking about these things. You know, there's no right or wrong answers. Especially in these topics. It's just experiences, theories, some based on historical facts. It's just a hodgepodge of knowledge that I've acquired 
over my 45 years of existence. And I'm going to be sharing them with you. So I do hope you guys enjoyed. I did not mean to go this long. I thought, oh, we'll just go for an hour, maybe two at the max. But we're reaching the two and a half hour mark. But we talked about so much. I guess this should have been the introduction of Urban Legend, or Urban and Folk Legend. I'm going to change the title of this thing. Because I always call it wrong. I've been doing it since I created it. And this is old, believe it or not. This is from my KOTR days, from my days on Ning websites. The days I actually wrote magazines, because this where this was created for which are a magazine which I haven't written that mag particular magazine in almost wow it's 2023 10 years now since we last, last published the last issue nope the last issue was published in June of 2012 2013 somewhere ish there Yes, I'm a jack of all trades. I even actually did one publication of a magazine for Sons and Daughters of Liberty. But I stuck to my guns on that one. If I wasn't going to get people, I couldn't get people involved to help and contribute. I wasn't going to sit there and do it by myself. And that's actually what happened to KOTR's magazine. It came down to just two of us. And it, I mean, yeah. I don't know if you want to call it a magazine. It was a book each month. I mean, it was 200 pages of everything. And I mean everything. There was conspiracy theories. There was prepping stuff in there. Everything was in there. And now that's always what I've envisioned. Being able to do, just have one channel where I can have everything. All my knowledge and information. But I learned you can't do that. Because certain people don't want to hear the, so, that side of things. And when you if you have them both, your skip, people just tune out. And I don't know. It, it's one of those things I battle myself with going back and forth. Well, I don't, I don't can't see why I can't have KOTR and Sons and Daughters and merge them. But I know I can't because it don't work. And it's a shame because it worked with the magazine. I mean, some of my magazine public magazine they've gotten ten thousands of reads, which is amazing. Considering we were just using Scribd and Isu, we started off on Scribd and Scribd, Scribd started changing things, and we went to Isu, which had a still to this day has an awesome format for anybody who wants to create their own magazines or books. The stuff you can do now on that with with a create in a magazine is amazing. You know, that's actually one thing. If I would ever go back to it, I would probably pay to play. Because you pay for the you pay for your a pre, more of a premium style. I can embed videos in a magazine. Think about that. But I don't I mean I'd have to get paid to do that. And I have that issue, especially with Sons and Daughters of Liberty. I won't do anything. That's why I don't sell merch. Even though it's been tempting. The artist to me, it, it, you know, I've got, I've had people ask me, man, I love your graphics. I love the stuff that Karine and Bree mentioned. She loves the graphics on this. I, I could. I probably could make some good money at it. But then... If I could find a way around it to do it to where I wouldn't have to worry about YouTube coming out saying, well, if you're going to put have advertised merch, then we're going to control your content. You can't be talking about these things. That's why I don't do it. I don't want nobody, no advertiser, no nobody to say because I'm paying for a service or I'm using a service and give them control of what I can say because that's what they do. That's why 90% of the people that have issues on YouTube 
is because they're monetized. I mean, some of the stuff I was talking about tonight, I wouldn't be allowed to talk about if I was monetized. That's why I've never done it. You know, and it's hard, especially now. I'm not working. I would, I don't know. There's something I got to think about and sit down and talk with a couple people about. Because Sons and Daughters of Liberty wasn't just created by me. You know, yes, I am the lab, listed as the creator, the owner, all those colorful labels for the ego. But no, we, me and a few friends sat down and we talked about it. You know, and these certain friends are, you know, ones related as descendants of Andrew Jackson. And this is what we agreed upon for this format. And I don't want to get away from that without even though it's mine all intellectual rights to this is mine I, I don't want to get away from that you know if we decide it maybe we will maybe we'll find a way to be able to do it do some of that stuff so you can get some of the artwork and stuff and keep so it's not here and it's not controlled by anybody else but it, it's just too much i've seen it with the patreons i've seen it paypal Teespring's done it, so, you know, honestly, I would do better, but if I could get a loan for that much to get to printing presses and stuff, to be able to make my own t-shirts and stuff, I would do better that way, and that's just not affordable, so, nothing I can't, something I can't afford, and I've got the, you know, beside myself, I've got three other artists that are amazing. Some of this artwork they've collaborated on. And some of them they've done. Some of most of it's mine, but now there's something I'll think about. I'll think about as I explore this this new thing that I'm bringing to you guys with urban and folk legends. It's been a fun fun night i've enjoyed myself I've had most fun i've had doing a podcast in a while honestly and that should tell you something it it, it is taxing when you're do dealing with the political spectrum even though it it, it, it uh, rears its ugly head even even in this one but i've had more fun doing this it's been more enlightening more uplifting and I'm sorry for those that don't like it. You can unsubscribe for me or you just don't watch when I watch it when I do these. This isn't going anywhere. It's staying over here on Sons and Daughters of Liberty. And I haven't done nothing with KOTR in years, so. It, this is much, every, every bit a part of me as... Being a direct descendant of John Rutledge and the Constitution and all the political side of me. So, like I said, hope you enjoyed. Let me know in the comments what you think, what you want to hear talked about. I mean, we threw around a bunch of stuff and there's just so much more we didn't even mention. So, if you want a topic, leave a comment. I'll see what we can do. No promises on next week. Like I said, originally I only planned on doing this once a week. But now I think this might become like a weekend, a Saturday night thing. Or once I get situated, a Friday night thing. Hopefully I'm back working by the end of the month. You know, I got a bunch of resumes out, applications put in already. I'll have a bunch more once I get back to my parents' house and all back into Ohio where it's not a two hour drive with that said you guys enjoy your weekend you guys have a beautiful night take a break from things take the break from the politics for you guys to focus on that find something enjoyable to do this weekend and have fun I know I had a blast tonight 
I've been wanting to do this for a, a while now, honestly. You know, like I said, it's labeled number no, the number two episode because it technically is. I did one a couple years ago trying to introduce it, and I, it just it didn't seem right at the time. Now it does seem right. Now I'm feeling it, so. And that's how I do my podcast anyway. What I'm feel, feeling drawn to talk about and do, so. I'm happy I'm been drawn back to this. I hope you guys are happy with the content that comes. And let me know what you think. You guys have a good night. I need to stop rambling because this ain't rambling with a chaotic minds.